All right, so here we go with, uh, we're kind of continuing from our lecture last time on current and current density. Um, and this time we pick up, we're gonna find the, de the definition of uh, what resistance is, right? Resistors are um, in every, every electrical circuit. So we need to know about resistance and resistivity. Um, and we'll also be seeing, we'll be starting with Ohm's law today. So we'll see what Ohm's law is um, and what it isn't. Uh, the objectives in this lecture are C.1.B, one through four. So let's take a quick look at what those are. Um, so that would be these four objectives here, basically. Uh, we're gonna be able to relate current and voltage for a resistor. Um, we'll be able to write the relationship between the electric field and the current density in a conductor. Um, we'll describe how the resistance depends upon its length and area, and uh, we'll come up with an expression for the resistance of a resistor, um, basically of a uniform cross section. So basically what's the resistance in, in kind of a wire, that, um, the same wire section that we were looking at um, the other day with our current and current density. Okay, um, so here we go. Let me put my paper back. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to start this by uh, seeing, seeing Ohm's law. Um, and what Ohm's law is, is it tells us um, that for many materials and most of the metals and, and basically all of the metals we're going to be working with in this class, um, the current density is going to be proportional to, um, I want to see if you guys can, uh, can guess this or figure it out or know it. What, what do you think, uh, what quantity that we've learned about um, would, would current density most likely be proportional to? A larger blank is gonna give us a larger current density. Any ideas? Area, uh, volume. We in the chat? Not, well, not just charge, right? Because current density has to do with moving charges, right? So if we, if we have a lot more charges, but they're not moving, we're still not gonna have any current density. Oh, just a larger current. All right. Well, electric field. Ah. Right, the larger the electric field in a in a wire, um, the more current density you're going to have. Makes sense. So that should kind of make sense if you think about it. Um, so we have a. We can write that as an equation, right? If we say that the the electric field, well, the electric field and the current density are proportional to each other, right? So I can write the electric field, and this is Ohm's law, really, is um, or the magnitude of the electric field is this constant of proportionality rho times the current density j, right? And remember, in the lecture the other day, we said the current density is just the the current per unit area, right? So um, the electric, that's what the electric field is proportional to. And the constant of proportionality is gonna depend on what material the conductor is made out of. And that's called the resistivity, right? So the resistivity of the material um, has to do with for a given electric field, how much current we're gonna, we're gonna get out of it. And sometimes you'll see uh, re the reciprocal of the resistivity is called the, the conductivity, um, but you really only need to know about one of them. Okay. Um, so this is this is Ohm's law. Right? That the, the electric field is um, proportional to current density. So any 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 material that's that follows Ohm's law we call ohmic, right? So for for ohmic materials this resistivity is constant, right? Which means these two E and J are really proportional to each other. Um, for non-ohmic materials, so for other materials the resistivity is not constant. So the resistivity could change for different, uh, different amounts of say potential, um, potential difference. All right, so for ohmic materials, we have a constant resistivity, it follows Ohm's law. For non-ohmic materials, um, the electric field and the, and the current density are not proportional to each other because um, the resistivity is going to depend on the potential on the current. Okay, so that's the definition of Ohm's law. 
Um, so let's see how that work. Let's see what we can uh, get by by applying this to um, a section of wire similar to the one that we looked at um, the other day. So we've got a section of wire that here's a the cross sectional area. Um, it's a length L and we're going to assume it's it's connected to a battery or something. So there is a potential difference across the wire um, and that potential difference would be uh, just delta V. Okay. And um, we can pretty much assume a uniform electric field in the wire um, if, it's a, if it's kind of a pretty uh, uniform cross section in the wire. Um, we'll have a uniform electric field in the wire, even if it's not that, that straight of a wire. Um, and that'll be going you know, along the length of the wire from the higher potential side to the lower potential. So, um, if we know that there's a, if we can assume that there's a uniform field in the wire, what would be an expression for the, the potential difference uh, in terms of that electric field? We know, how, we know how to get the potential from the electric field and vice versa, and it's, and it's pretty simple if it's a uniform field. Um, can anybody tell me how I would, how I can express the potential difference in terms of E and maybe some other properties of the, of the wire? I can't type right now. Wait, let me, uh, wait, <clears throat> wait, I got a napkin. <laughs> no one wants to talk, dude. Someone's got to talk, bro. Oh, you know what? I wasn't able to hear any of my speakers were, I thought nobody was talking. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that the whole, the whole class. Um, I didn't hear anybody talking because my speakers were set to the wrong thing. So that's good. Um, try, can we try again? What, what might, uh, that expression. No, said anything. Um, there we go. And I can hear you now. So. Oh, wait, but my bad. <laughs> One second. Anybody? Think about in between like a, in a parallel plate capacitor, right? It, it's kind of similar because we have a uniform electric field inside in between the two plates. Uh, what would we know about the, the, the um, electric field compared to the potential difference related to the- potential? It's constant, right? Yep. Or... Yep, we've got a uniform electric field, yep. So then, wouldn't it just be um, the length of the wire times the area of the wire or actually no. No, you're getting, you're getting close. You, you, you would have to take into account the electric field of the wire. So that's maybe E over um, area times length. I don't or, know. Where's that coming from though? We know that we know that the, um, we know that we can get the electric field because it's the um, so electric deriv field, uh, derivative of the potential, right? And, vi and vice versa, we can get the potential because it's the integral of the electric field over the length. Um, and if, when the electric field is uniform, that, that simplifies, right? Were you going to say something, Molly? Is it? Well, the electric field at, well, point where the L is, and then um, isn't it like the difference between? Two points. Well, we know that we know that we we can say um, right. One of our definitions for potential, right, is the it's the integral of e dot dx basically, right? The, the integral of the x component of the electric field dot dx. Um, so when the electric field is uniform, right, that integral just becomes e times e times x. Right, so just like in between a, in, a, in between a parallel plate capacitor, the potential is just E times D, the um, the separation distance of the plates. Here we just have- So then it would just be E times L. Yeah, E times L, exactly. It's just E times L, right? The potential difference here. Electric field times the length is gonna, get, is gonna give us potential. All right. Um, I thought it was some new equation. What's that? 
I, I thought it was going to be some new equation. No, no, just that. Just, I feel stupid now. That's fine. It's. Uh, I don't think I asked you that clearly. It's fine. Um, one thing. One thing before we go on to to remember, because we have said in a conductor when we were talking about electrostatics, right? We said that inside a conductor, the electric field is always zero, right? That was kind of a, a hard, kind of a hard and fast rule in our in our electrostatics unit. Um, or actually, it was in unit two when we first saw that. Um, so I just want to take a second to, to ask why in this wire, since we, we've said that, that in electrostatics, the electric field is always zero, um, now we're saying this electric field is uniform and it's not zero. Are we, is that a contradiction or what's the difference? Is it because you have charge moving through the wire? Yeah, it's yeah, right. Basically, yeah, it is. It's because we're, we're we're not talking about electrostatics anymore, right? Because we have moving charges, right? We said with electrostatics that that the electric field is always going to be zero because if it's not zero, then the charges are going to move around and equilibrate until there's no more force on any of them, and then the electric field is zero, right? But in this case, we've got a wire connected to a battery, so we're going to have a continuous flow of charges, so we're not going to reach any electrostatic equilibrium, um, so the electric field will 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 be there in the wire. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. So for ohmic materials, right? Let's see if we can we can uh, replace this electric field here with what we've said for, for ohmic materials, it's gonna be the current density times the resistivity of the wire. So let's see what we get. If we get the, the potential difference and I'm, I'm, we're talking about absolute values here. I'm not gonna put the absolute value sign anymore. Um, is just going to be now the resistivity times the current density times the length of the wire. And if we remember just the definition of current density is the charge per area or uh, current per area, right? So that's the, so then we get resistivity times current per area times the length of the wire. And then I'm going to If I, well, I'm going to get this expression. I want to divide these by the current here. And I, what I get, and we'll see where this is going on the next page in just a second. If I divide both sides by the current, I get the, the ratio of the potential to the current. So de delta V over I is just going to be equal to, to some properties of this material, right? The resistivity times um, length of the material over area. So I have this, this quantity here, which is the ratio of potential to current, right? Is gonna always be the same for, for an ohmic material, right? Because this wire, the length of the wire isn't changing, the cross-sectional area of the wire isn't changing, and this is gonna be constant if it's an ohmic material, right? So for any given piece of wire, this uh, delta V over I, um, as long as we have an ohmic material, isn't gonna change. Um, so is it possible is, is it possible for a wire to shrink in, um, in size the further along it goes, therefore changing the... Yeah, you could make, well, you, yeah, you could make a conductor that, that, um, that looks, you know, something like, uh, you know, if you wanted to, you could make a, a piece of metal that kind of is, is shaped like this, right, where it's bigger at one end than the other. Um, you might have various reasons for doing that, but in that case, um, you know, we would have to do, we would have to, we wouldn't have a uniform electric field and we'd actually have to do this integral to figure out what the, um, what the electric field is. So if you have some kind of weird shaped conductor, um, mm -hmm. this isn't going to be true anymore. So this is also not going to be true. Okay, cool. But, but yeah, you can, you could, you could do that. Um, okay. Um, any ideas? Hope. Hopefully there is what what we're gonna def we're gonna define a new quantity to be this ratio the the um, potential difference over the current. Any idea what that's gonna be called? Let's uh, <laughs> take a look at the title of the lecture one more time. Resistance. Resistance. Yeah, that's the resistance. All right, so. We've got the resistance of a conductor. And the, the, we define the resistance of the con conductor is the ratio of the potential difference to the current. 
All right, so a nice big important equation here, very useful equation. We're gonna see this all the time I'm using the three lines there for definition. Um, resistance is defined as delta V over I. And that's true for um, any material, ohmic or not, right? The only difference is that um, for an ohmic material, let me put a nice big box around this. Um, for an ohmic material, we know we can say that the resistance is just going to be equal to um, this, the resistivity times the, the length of the material over the cross-sectional area of it. Right, but delta V over I, that's going to be the resistance for, for, um, for any material only. Um, and it's important to remember that you, you kind of, there's a com very, very common misconception even in, uh, um, even in some places where you wouldn't think you're seeing it. This is not Ohm's law. I'm even going to write that. This is not, V equals IR is not Ohm's law. It's just the definition of resistance. All right, so let's see. So just to, just to clarify up and kind of finish this, because all we were really doing today was looking for the definition of resistance, definition of resistivity, and, and, uh, and what Ohm's law is. Um, let's see, we need to, let's see, the unit, what, what's the unit gonna be for resistance? Ohms? It is ohms, yeah. And what, yeah, what are we going to meter, right? Say that again. Or ohm meter. Is it ohm meters? Um, or is it just okay. ohms? That's a good question. Resistance is just ohms. Um, and how are we going to have to define one? We're going to have to define an ohm to be uh, something, right? How, how, what, what's an ohm going to have to be equal to if we take a look? A volt, a volt per amp. Yeah, a volt per amp. So one ohm is defined to be one volt per amp or ampere. Um, so I just, and I want to, let's see, clarify. So for the, cause we learned resistivity and resistance and sometimes it can be, um, confusing, but the important thing to remember is resistivity. That's the row depends only on the material. So copper has a certain resistivity. It doesn't matter the length, size, shape or, of copper wire. The resistivity of copper is the resistivity of copper. Um, resistance that's all that does depend on the shape, size, and everything else, right? If we make a if we have a longer copper wire, we're gonna have a bigger resistance. Right? If we have a, a narrower or a you know a smaller gauge wire, we're gonna have a bigger resistance. Right. So resistance also depends on the shape, size, and um, the shape and the size of the particular conductor. and resistivity are different things. They're different things, yeah. They're different things. They're related, right? And they're related in this way for ohmic materials, right? Resistivity has to do with, with, with the material itself. Um, resistance has, has to do with the extrin extrinsic properties of, of the shape and the size, right? You can change the resistance of a piece of copper by, by making it longer or narrower or whatever, but you can't change the resistivity. Um, Wait, so which one depends on temperature? Well, so that's a good, um, they both, well, they're both going to depend on temperature. So, so the resistivity, um, 
the resistivity will depend on temperature, not for the purposes of this class, but but in general, um, you 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 can change. You'll you'll have some change in resistivity with a change in temperature, um, and oh, if the resistivity changes, the the resistance will change as well. Um, so, so depend when I say it depends on the material. Also, I suppose it also depends on the the temperature of the material. I see. That's a good yeah, because question. each material acts differently at a different temperature. Um, so just to see uh, graphically a little bit, if you have an ohmic material, when you when you change the potential, you got basically got a straight line, right? The current as a function of potential, right? If you increase the potential, you're going to increase the current linearly, right? And the slope of this line is going to be. Um, well, I, it's going to be um, one over R. Is it R or one over R? One over R, right? But for an ohmic material, that slope's constant, right? So the resistance is constant. Uh, for a non-ohmic material, if you wanted to, to plot the current as a function of potential, you'd have something with a non-constant slope. So something, you know, probably curving like this. Right, so um, for both of these, the slope is um, just one over the resistance, right? So constant R up here, non-constant R down here, right? So since the resistivity is not constant, your resistance isn't going to be constant either. Um, and I think we can stop there as far as resistance, resistivity, and Ohm's law. Um, any questions on where any of these definitions came from or anything like that? All right.